Hey guys, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to do a demo of a place called OK Slip Falls up in the Adirondacks in New York State. Uh, one of my favorite hikes. The first time I went in there I actually painted on location with one of my classes. Uh, so here's the reference photo I'm going to work from. And I did a very simple, simple sketch on Arches 140 pound cold press. This is about a 14 by 20 measurement. And the first wash only has three colors. It has yellow ochre, cobalt blue, and quinacridone rose. And I'm using a little um, Da Vinci uh, mop brush. So yes, the whole first wash is just those three colors. Again, cobalt blue, quin rose, and yellow ochre. And I do have this speeded up a bit, so uh, otherwise it would take way too long. So what I'm doing in this first application of paint is just putting pigment on everything that is not the white of the paper. I want to save the white of the waterfall, so I'm painting everything but the waterfall. So you can think of it as painting the negative space. The white, the water is the positive space, at least for now. And as you can see, I paint in a very loose fashion. I'm not too worried about any kind of detail to begin. A little bit of shift in pigment here and there. I'm not afraid to splatter a little paint. It doesn't matter if it drips a bit. I am working on an angle. It helps the paint move down the paper. And there's just a little bit of variety in the pigment in there. It's mostly yellow ochre. Add a little Quinn Rose put into that mixture. Softening some edges. And starting to think about some of that negative space. So again, painting behind the water to suggest the rocks that are behind the water. but not thinking about really rocks or trees or light or shadow right now, just getting some pigment in there so that I can see the white of the waterfall. And I, I could use masking on this, but it's a large enough painting that I don't really feel like I need to. And pulling the paint from the top of the paper to the bottom of the paper, not going back in there when it's still wet. Might splatter a little bit, but I don't go back into that top area uh, until it's um, completely dry. Use my spray bottle a little bit to keep it nice and damp. You don't have to use the colors that I use. Like you don't have to use a Quinn Rose. You could use a permanent rose. You could use um, a lizard and crimson. You could use a regular red. Really any red, yellow, blue. But then you can get these nice kind of smoky neutrals. So that was the first application. So now I'm going to start working on some of those rock shapes that surround the water. Just to show myself where those forms sit in space. So this is the next set of values. A little ultramarine blue. yellow ochre, there's a, some more quin rose, a little bit of burnt sienna, 
and I kind of just pulse back and forth between these colors. Still not thinking about painting rocks, just shifting warm to cool, lighter to darker, softening edges. I'm just suggesting form. And again, putting a little water on those edges to soften them. That was a little burnt sienna. Ultramarine blue. And I have a little bit of ultramarine violet that I'm mixing in with that to cool it off. Reinforcing those vertical shapes of the rocks that are underneath the water. And softening edges with a damp brush. There's a little lavender, brown matter. So it's really all just the same color still. I'm just kind of moving back and forth from kind of warm to cool. And then here's the full shot of the uh, reference photo again. I'm going to start now on the left side. This is one of my Escoda Prado brushes. I believe this is a number eight. These are great because they have a really nice point. So really what colors? Uh, Quin Rose, Brin Sienna, Brown Matter, Yellow Ochre, Lavender, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Blue, and just a touch of that Ultramarine Violet occasionally. Uh, 
So do you see how I suggest rocks without painting rocks? I'm just going light to dark, warm to cool, leaving a bit of that underpainting as the light on the rocks or the water on top of the rocks. Softening the edges just for the damp brush again. And the lavender is a great color for suggesting the transition between the rocky area and where the waterfall is because it hints at um, the splashy water uh, and the moving water. A little darker down here at the bottom. So, so far, really just two washes. The underpainting was the light. The second application is considered a mid-tone, so I'm getting some of this mid-tone in. I did just spray that with a spray bottle to get that paint to move for me. Look how nicely that lavender plays with the burnt sienna. And I know that this is just the second application of paint, so I don't have to worry about any kind of detail. Just trying to speak a little bit about the form in there. And you can see how the waterfall starts to emerge from the paper just by putting those two values on here. Now I go in and, and kind of lift with a damp brush. And here's the second application, what it looks like when it dries. And I did forget to record that first bit of pigment that I put on the top. It's a cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre, um, a little bit of cerulean blue, cobalt blue. Doing some splattering, mixing some darker greens. Add cadmium yellow light, just popped right onto that yellow ochre underpainting. Using the spray bottle. And that was cerulean blue and yellow ochre. Oop, starting to rain really heavy here. You may be able to hear that through my um, microphone. We're expecting tornadoes today here in Delaware and uh, winds of up to 60 miles an hour. So hopefully I will not lose my power. So just trying to get another set of values in there without painting leaves or trees. This is just suggesting form. And I just love seeing what happens. That's why I do a lot of splattering and sometimes that's when the best stuff happens with watercolor is when you don't plan it. When you let watercolor just be watercolor. And I keep connecting shapes, working from top to bottom. I don't jump around.
and it was just a little bit of cobalt and brown matter for a little bit of a deeper value in there. And you can really take your time when you're working like this because again we know that it's not the final application of paint. Coming down to the bottom of the page and doing a little bit of lifting again. It's still damp in there so I can kind of sculpt some of that pigment. and splattering to suggest texture. So third wash. Starting to put in some of those darker forms that are in the foreground. And this is made with ultramarine blue. I think I put a little bit of uh, turquoise in there, probably some neutral tint, a little yellow ochre, and again a spray bottle, keeping it nice and juicy. And I'm back to using a big mop brushes. This is one of my Escoda, um, I'm not sure which one it is, but it's a squirrel mop probably a 14. And see, I'm just putting shapes in that foreground, not thinking trees, just getting some darker values in. I know once I get the paint on there, I can manipulate it. Keeping those edges nice and soft. A little more of that turquoise mixed in there. And yellow ochre. Just establishing those darks in the foreground. A little splattering with lavender. Just getting a little bit of texture, some darker value in there. Clean water. Yeah, that was a little turquoise and burnt sienna. It makes a really nice green. So what I'm doing now is laying in some darker values at the top. 
and I'm thinking about the rocks by the waterfall and these darker values are going to go behind some of these rocks which are lighter. To make the light on those rocks show up. Still not painting trees. Just thinking shape and value. So I'm still working with the same colors, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, cerulean. And you see how you can use the underpainting as the light, the highlight on some of these shapes. And that was brown matter and a little ultramarine blue. Sometimes I just throw water just to get the paint to move a little more. And remember, I am working on an angle, so the paint does tend to want to move down the page. So you get great color mixing that you wouldn't necessarily get if you were mixing everything directly on the palette. Now it's starting to emerge. And again, my uh, handy dandy spray bottle, which is such an important tool. Lifting with my brush. And each time I lift and create a shape, I, I take the extra paint out of my brush with a with a paper towel that I keep in my right hand. That has a nice sense of light in there now. Now deepening the rock shapes a little bit, putting a little more value in some of those places. And using a damp brush again to soften an edge. And then here is the finished painting. I do apologize, I forgot to record the last little bit of this where I put in some of those darker darks up at the top. But hopefully that gives you an idea of my process and stay tuned, I'm gonna be posting more of these. And thanks for joining me. Take care, bye-bye.